On today's episode of The Glue Guys, we're going to dive into that mailbag. We're going to peruse around and pull out the greatest thoughts, questions, comments Beautiful. from Nets Nation, netspot at gmail.com. Wow, nice promo, Mike. Welcome back to The Glue Guys. This is Mike here. Say hello, Brian. Hello. Check us out on Twitter at BKGlueGuysNetsDaily.com. The Athletic. Get yourself on the paywall at TheAthletic.com slash GlueGuys. Some subsidiary of the New York Times. Brad. Michael. Did you watch the game on Sunday? I did. I How feel fun like, was that? I feel like I stunned you with my with my pipes there. You were you like were hypnotized. <laughs> <That> was like, <laughs> it was the siren's call. I watched the game, Mike. It was it's good. It's good, but I still it's it's leaving me longing, these home games. Ooh, There's why? so much Tell to get into. Of course everyone knows why. It's the same <laughs> same G D reason it's been all season. Um I mean they're fun, but it's a you know, that rhymed, by the way. It's the same GD reason for the same season. Yeah, something you said that. Something like that. Um, yeah. What are you, so a Sondheim over there. <laughs> so Jeez. While it's fun to like habitually beat up on the lowly Knicks at at Barclays. Don't get me wrong. That's fun and watch KD have to, you know, carry an an insane load in the process. <laughs> uh, that's not. It's not giving me. You know, there's just this this little feeling of doubt and longing that that sure. presides over all of these Barclays games, and I think we know why. We don't have to get too too into it. I'm sure we will. Should we just get into it? I mean, Kyrie's, in the, <laughs> Kyrie's in the front row in a beautiful jacket. You I mean love the, the Phantom of the Barclays? The Phantom of the Barclays. The Phantom of the, the Barclays. <laughs> was hanging in the rafters, and I mean, he, he was literally his coat was long enough to where it could have been. Yeah, what would you call uh, that? Somebody, it was like a duster. Was that a duster? Uh, it was a duster. It was a Lord Baltimore <laughs> yeah. coat. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Was, wasn't there like a, a Mad Men episode where they go down to Baltimore and there's some like uh, coat apparel company that they're trying to get the account for? London It's like Fog. a duster company. London Fog. London the... Fog. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, like, yeah, like, the Phantom like of the Bar Place was there. <laughs> Steel trap with my <laughs> Mad Men For certain, yeah, for yeah. Mad Men. Um, but but hey, uh, we're gonna get into Kyrie. Alex Schiffer's gonna do a pop on. Uh, it's right. a new thing revolutionizing here. Popping on, people just a pop on. on. People popping on. Um, but let's should we just dive right into the mailbag? Because we have so many good questions. I love everyone. Netspot at gmail.com. And if you want to get a part of the conversation, you can always just send out emails to us, and we, we will dig through and we will bring them. And we don't need to ask for them. Just do it. Netspot at gmail.com and. Apple Podcast five stars. We didn't want to have them. Brian, who's up? Next up, it's Cheer Boy. That's Boys. Holy shit! That really blew up my ears. That was that's probably going to be too loud for. People. Oh, is that so loud for you? <laughs> that was a little loud. <laughs> It'll so be this fun. one's funny. It's not loud on my end, so I have no. Mo- I don't. I don't know how to modulate the sound of my own voice over here. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'll I'll turn it down. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We're not gonna we're not gonna edit that, but um, we'll turn it down going forward. Anyways, uh, next up, True Boy Aaron Voigt. If you couldn't hear, uh, he says it's probably Vought, like the evil corporation in The Boys, a fantastic show on Prime Video. You probably don't watch The Boys by. If, I I would I would have. It's I'm so not against dope. it. Um, and Vought's the evil Amazon type corporation in the show how's um how's the the famous void spelled um what's his john name? yeah john <laughs> i think it's v-o-i-g-h-t all right all right well for now we'll i don't go... know i'm not a cpac member i guess but... i guess we'll go aaron vogged is that what you're saying vogged, vogged? well they call okay. it yeah anyways we'll go vogged yeah. okay Aaron Vogd. I'm not sure. Anyway, what do you think will actually be the end result of the season? Wow, he's going all in. Jeez. <laughs> oh, he's, he's really gun to your head, Mike, including what you think of what will happen with the Kyrie situation. Plus, when are the chances when we see Simmons before <laughs> April? It's like, just well, put, put just your like, cards on the table, the Mike. Gatling gun of <laughs> devastating. Okay, well, we won't see Ben Simmons before April. Uh, he, Kyrie <laughs> will be allowed to play at home, and the Nets will win the NBA championship. Op- opportunity no. to be historically correct here, Mike, because we did just post receipts on Twitter. You know, we did. We had a, <laughs> we had a blistering take about Ben. We forgot about this that Ben Simmons was potentially likely to get traded to the Nets in July, July fourteenth, to be exact. Well, of 2021. not that he was likely. That we predicted. That you basically predicted that at the time when we were all wondering where Ben Simmons was going to go, at the beginning of the Ben Simmons and saga, before the Nets were even in the picture, yeah. Brian had floated 
Is this a Nets team? Is this a Nets yeah. uh, possible? This was July, so this is pre-vaccine uh, mandates. People that gotta we had to remember care about. what the world was like in July. Like it was, things were so hunky dory. We were about to just fall out of bed into a championship season. Um, that didn't. That wasn't the case. But that back, hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. Anyways, enough blowing smoke up our own butts. Uh, do you want to engage with this insane request, Mike? To, to have sure. A- so I'll <laughs> start with the last question. What are the chances we see some? Because this is a big deal. I mean, I'm sure we have other email bad questions. So anyone else that asks us this, um, I appreciate your thoughts and comments here. Do you, Brian, think we're going to see Ben Simmons? I do not. Uh, Steve Nash, to give a news update, to to ground this argument in fact. Qualifier before April, you're saying, because you said see him, period, and you want to say before April. Oh, say yeah. before April. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve Nash had said that Ben isn't even doing, like, one-on-nothing work. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that he's not even Yi Jian Leon. There's not even a chair, <laughs> no chair. with which Damn. Ben Simmons could operate Forgot against. the folding chair. There's no chair, doesn't exist for Ben Simmons. He, the chair would trump him at this point, which is very concerning. We have two weeks left before uh, March is done and April is upon us. Um, and Ben Simmons can't even handle the Jan Gilan, Jan Gilan, Jan Leon. Just call him the muscle devil. Just go muscle devil. Test. Just go muscle devil. Mus- <laughs> the muscle devil uh, <laughs> Test the endurance test. Yeah. Um, before and then Steve was like, before you could even do three on three or four on four. Yeah. Um, so I'm my concern meter is increasing by the day. Oh wow! That we don't see Ben Simmons actually play basketball for this team, uh, and I don't think this is a mental health thing because they would have said it. Um, and if it was, again, I, I've said this before. Like I would, I would be okay. Like I understand. Unfortunately, the the Nets traded for someone who has self-professed mental health issues. And if you do that, you need to support that person. Mm. But he has yet to say that has anything to do with that. And and if anything, by him showing up in Philadelphia, I'm not saying his mental health is cured. I know it doesn't work like that, but he shows that he, you know, isn't as, as much of a, I don't know, like as, as much in the doldrums of his mind as you would think Mm. his back is, it must be an, a real issue. And that's a concern, man. Like, that's a big deal. So before April, we have two weeks left. I don't know. Do you think he's going to be able to ramp up in two weeks? You think that we're going to get that ramp? How long is that ramp for Ben Simmons? Back, back injuries are so hinky. I mean, Aaron's asking tough questions, and he's expecting real answers. And, you know, I don't have them. And this is the wrong show for that. Point blank, period, Aaron. So so suck on that. <laughs> um <laughs> Just kidding. How dare you try to ask us questions on our own goddamn pod where we solicit them? How um, dare you? Aaron? But yeah, I mean, uh, betting man, if I'm putting five bucks on it, I say, you know, wait till April. That's all, you know, based on nothing other than, you know, putting my finger up to the wind on back injuries, Mike. So some, <laughs> some serious scientific rigor. Wind. Um, um, what do you think will happen with Kyrie's situation? I, I ultimately do think mm-hmm. he will be. Uh, allowed to play at home i have to brian apologize oh. to a certain sect of our uh followers yeah you do on this, where's the old apollo tweet uh uh draft don't we remember that so we'll i had that, an ugly it. moment with mina kimes where <laughs> oh no <laughs> where before mina came on if you didn't listen to it mina popped on after the 76ers game she did a pop on mm-hmm. something we're revolutionizing here on the show mm-hmm. great great appearance but before that in our pre-show conversation on twitter between Mina and I, I accidentally ruined the ending of the movie Nightmare Alley to her, assuming that she had seen it. But that's not a fair. I shouldn't assume. I don't. I mean, she's a busy person. I just don't think you conceptually understand what a spoiler is. I think that's part. Of, <laughs> I think that's part of the problem. And and so I know you've seen it, right? Yeah. Do you know? Well, I, this isn't a spoiler, but you'll like this. You know, I eat a lot of. Uh, I pickle my own hard boiled eggs. It's just a real fast. You know protein boost and as a snack and so i have this big jar like you know a two gallon jar from ikea that is in my fridge and it has like you know a brown vinegar with like a bunch of uh hard-boiled eggs floating (laughs) in it so i call it enoch i call it enoch that's the jar which is (laughs) which is the name of the jar the jarred baby in in the movie (laughs) nightmare (laughs) anyways it's, it's really disturbing anyway sorry go on and that doesn't ruin the movie no. for, I mean, that's, no, you that's don't need to do that. that. So, de- see, that's so anyways, the difference I, between a detail and a spoiler, Mike, just so we're anyways, continue. Yeah. <laughs> not like me saying the ending mm. of the movie. Yeah. Um, but so Mina brings it up on the show 
and I immediately get defensive. And it was a real aha moment for me mm. because I was in the wrong. Yeah. Okay. I, I committed the sin and yet I tried to defend my sin in that, in the more moment when I, it was my lizard brain coming out and saying, must attack back. Yeah. Right. When really I should just apologize. And I eventually did. So I'm going to apologize to people on Twitter. Uh, on Friday, this relates to Kyrie. I had tweeted out rather innocently mm. that. <laughs> That's wait, li little there's... lizard brain. <laughs> rather <laughs> innocently, <laughs> I'll add. <laughs> yeah. Did nothing wrong here, yeah. folks. Okay. It was a perfect phone call. Yeah. <laughs> um, the I had tweeted out rather innocently yeah. that um, usually around Friday, Friday at four o'clock is when PR people will dump. It's called a news dump. Will will dump out information that they really don't want people to pay attention to that they have to announce, and something like that would be that the city announcing that they are giving Kyrie and other performers an exemption that if, you know, they are, they are performing in an arena where vaccinations aren't required, that they themselves, the performers don't have to be vaccinated. That's how I think the loophole would work. So it wouldn't just cover Kyrie. It would cover, you know, any Nick who's unvaccinated that we know that they all are um, and Broadway performers, comedians, blah, 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 who are performing in a place where unvaccinated guests could come but they themselves cannot be there uh, as a performer, but could be there as a guest, right? The Kyrie loophole. Um, I tweet that out. People immediately are assuming that I have inside information that at four o'clock on Friday, on March 11th, um, that Kyrie will be, an, it'll be announced that yeah. Kyrie will be able to play at home. Uh, I, then I kind of play up it. I put a uh, time clock emoji. That's That was your real that crime. Was, that was the only, the, that, was, that was really bad. <laughs> you seized on the drama because you can't resist because there's a, a dark genie who rests control of your hands when, when, cause everyone's got a little, <laughs> everyone's got a little troll, but you've got a big troll. I got a big troll. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my elementary school mascot was a troll. No way. The Bowman Bridge trolls. What a great! They should do more of that. There should be more like fan, like high fantasy in school mascots. Exactly. You don't get a lot of like big cats and stuff. Like, let's go centaur. You know, let's get some centaurs well, going. I, think about when we were growing up. Trolls were big. You know, you put them at the end of your pencil. You know, like those little they, fuzzy. A, I mean, they had the trolls doll. That was a huge phenomenon. It was, it was a big part of our lives. Yeah. Um, as big as uh, the Lewinsky scandal. It was that and and troll truly, truly stuff. Troll yeah. paraphernalia. Uh, so I apologize to everyone that I, and then I also tweeted out a screenshot of the numbers going down in New York and COVID. So I, I was you're, feeding it. I was, to, yeah. Nets Twitter was a, a, a steam engine train and I was feeding coal <laughs> into that bad boy. Yeah. So we I got, apologize. We got our first like uh, on Nets Daily, the comment boards. Shout out to the Nets Daily comment boards, which don't get much action, <laughs> but when they do, they are, they are getting increasingly interesting. Uh, where some guy was just like, Deplatform these fools like that's <laughs> yeah. we got it. a deplatform we got a what's we got a parlor yeah. we got parlor yeah you so know? so you can find the podcast on Gab and and uh, <laughs> parlor Telegram Truth. yeah Truth Social or something yeah find us there that's where Anyways, we're going next uh, or Spotify will give us two hundred million dollars true could be either could be either um, um, so but, uh, yeah. so what do we think is going to happen? Yeah. We're still in Aaron's question. Right. What do you think is going to happen with Kyrie? I do think he's going to be able to play at home at some point uh, this season slash postseason. Uh, I do think that. Yeah. I don't know. Here, here's why. Yeah. Do you want the big take? Mm -hmm. I am pro-vaccine. I am pro-mandates in most cases. But I think what is happening, a lot of public health is perception, right? You have to convince people to comply with public health to do the thing you want them to do. And by there being this Kyrie loophole, by being this clear example, there's a guy, Kyrie Irving, he's unvaccinated, he plays basketball everywhere else in the world, but yet he can't play at home, but he could sit courtside. You know, we all know the loophole. He could sit courtside and be unvaccinated and be at the arena with other unvaccinated people. If he takes two steps inward, he is uh, an illegal unvaccinated person on, in a sense, and if he goes back into his seat, he is okay, right? And and we all know the science of that is, there is no science behind that, yeah. right? And I think that it undermines the entire mandate when you're having such a clear public spectacle where it gives people the ammo, people like Clay Travis. Clay Travis, mm -hmm. who is like, uh, I forget, he has outkicked the coverage is his website. <laughs> He's 
like Fox News is sports, right? I actually okay. think he's owned by Fox now. His his, his outlet. Um, it just gives people like that this ammo to attack all mandates. And if you're a supporter of mandates, or you're a supporter of vaccinations. The Kyrie situation is actually one where you're rooting for Kyrie. Unfortunately, dude's not going to get vaccinated. There's a lot of people in this country that won't. And by having these loopholes, uh, it weakens the entire system. So uh, it, it makes sense, public perception-wise, to to allow people like Kyrie to play. Can I can I posit a counterpoint for the perception argument? Please. Okay. Is this one sec? One second. Oh. This is I don't want this to be please, so loud. Manufacture tension. We gotta work on that drop. Um fourteen hundred people have recently quit their jobs over these mandates. Okay. I like the way you say that. Quitting their jobs. Some people say fired. I agree with you. Yeah. Quit they their quit jobs because they, they decided they, it was to a, get vaccinated. They volunteered not to get vaccinated, which again, we, we don't think that that's the move, but you know, Bless up. Hope you find work, you know. Uh, but I would say that the perception goes both ways, right? Because on the other side of this, 1,400 people lost, you know, quit their jobs. And now we're kind of making a conciliatory gesture towards this multimillionaire athlete with a cushy ass job. And, <laughs> and I think that there is a sort of classist argument to be made here, which is going to be an interesting uh, needle to thread. Um, because I think you can make an argument both ways like, Oh, okay, great. So like if you're just a, uh, a blue collar lunch pail kind of guy, then the city doesn't care and you have to go find work elsewhere. But if you are a high paid, high influence athlete, um, the city will basically bend over backwards to make any kind of a, uh, accommodations for your stance on the vaccine. So I think it's a tough one for this public perception uh, on both sides of it. I 100% agree. It's a really tough one. There's no winners. I mean, Eric Adams, the mayor, said it himself. If Kyrie runs to play basketball, you just get vaccinated. Um, yep. And I'm pretty sure, I think there's been some debate about this. I'm pretty sure reading the, the not the Keys to New York, but the private employer mandate, the second Kyrie gets the first shot, he can play. And then he just has to continue to get, he has to get the second shot within 45 days. And I don't even think they care about Booster at this point. Yeah. Right? So, you know, if if I'm Kyrie, I would do that because I support vaccinations, but we know Kyrie isn't going to do that. The, my whole thing is that, like, <laughs> neither of us are lawyers, right? And I've been an amateur Achilles specialist, a, an amateur I mean, epidemiologist. I'm definitely an amateur lawyer at this point, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I know that you are. Come on. Yeah. Um, but I do know enough about public policy in my old job at WCBS 880 okay. where I'd cover politics sometimes shout out and laws and, and and laws work best when they're all encompassing or they are surgically small if they are so pinpoint that there's no sort of other groups associated the problem with the private employer mandate is it affects a vast majority of people but there are these big loopholes where the same person who works for a company a private company can't work for that company anymore because they are no longer vaccinated, but they could go into the office mm. and hug everyone in the office and be allowed to do so. Kyrie Irving can't play at home, but he can sit courtside, right? And those inconsistencies are, we, they weaken a law and they make it more so easier to pick apart in a court of law. Now what would need to happen, this, I pray this doesn't happen because we, our heads would explode. Is that like Kyrie would need to sue the city? He would have to get an emergency hearing and say, I am being disenfranchised in some way because I can do this, but I can't do this. I'm losing millions of dollars. And it's there's hypocrisy in the law. And I don't want to see that happen. I think it would be a bad decision from Kyrie Irving. I, I actually um, don't, I don't even think he think, would. Yeah, he would win that case. That's that's the other part of it too. I don't I don't I mean like the mandate has been there's it, a chance. The optics of it are bad, but the legislation is fairly consistent. I mean, I know that this seems like a strange thing because everyone's kind of up yeah. in arms like, "Oh, he's at the game." That makes no sense scientifically. Again, that's not about science. It's about where science meets public praxis. Praxis. Yeah. Praxis. Like, yeah, it, it and and just you always said this right. The city wants you to get vaccinated. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. It's not really as he's not about science. It's actually just they want you to get vaccinated. And so blah blah blah. 
blah yes. blah blah. But no more of that. That's the last one. Back to the yeah. back to the B ball talk, Mike. Which, um, with that in mind, next up, Cheer Boy. That's Piero Infante. That's really the name on this thing. P- Piero Infante. Uh, do you think we ever see Bruce Brown and Ben Simmons share playtime? I love these questions. These are just what a high ball <laughs> argument. Yeah. That's like we go from vaccines yeah. to Bruce Brown it's, and Ben Simmons. Which let me um, offer your, this take. Yeah, on you it. tell me. Go for it. Yeah. Do you think we ever see James Johnson again in a world where Ben Simmons is coming back? Because that's more, I think, the 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 person who has the most overlap in terms of skill and is kind of becomes the most redundant, unfortunately. But James Johnson has been awesome lately, so I don't. I feel bad saying that. I, I like James Johnson, but I agree with you. Where like if Ben Simmons is playing, there's no like one Blake Griffin might as well not show up to the games at that point, I right? It's really bad. And and James Johnson, there's almost like no circumstance where he would play. It would be very. It'd be like maybe like he gets like the eight minutes. I don't know, like just to mix it up a little bit to be because like there's a world where like we think that Ben Simmons is a small ball five, but but Ben Simmons because of his back actually. Like to take the pounding as a small ball five mm. would be a bad idea, so they're playing him ex- like kind of like how the Lakers played Anthony Davis at the four for as long as they could, and then they would bust out Anthony Davis at the five lineups when they really needed it. Ben Simmons at the five with KD, Kyrie, Seth Curry, and name anyone else you want to, Patty Mills, whoever. That's like the death lineup, right? That's mm-hmm. besides the, the random games where Patty Mills can't shoot at all like the next game. Um, so that's a lineup of death for them. Uh, um, I, I, can I, can I tell you something about Bruce Brown? Oh yeah. What are you? Well, say? I was just saying we, I mean, we, you might be about to say the same thing, but we talked about this last show, but it is insane how well he's played since James Harden got traded. It's like, I would never have thought that James Harden was standing in Bruce Brown's way, but it really appears that it, he has been unlocked since Harden's gone. And there was the classic stat last season where the Bruce Brown, James Harden pick and roll was right. the most devastating pick and roll per possession in the NBA. Yeah. But then they didn't get they, along. They didn't do it. They didn't do season. it anymore. Like, and, and Bruce Brown kind of fell out of the rotation somehow. Bruce Brown over the past 13 games. So this goes back to like, this is right before um, Harden has his awful game against Sacramento. And then we don't see him for the rest of his life. 14 points per game half a block, one and a half steals, three assists, and six rebounds, shooting 54% from the field. He's actually shooting 44% from three on two attempts a game. So he's hitting one out of every two, basically, right? But he's that's that's a significant jump for him because he hasn't been a very good three-point shooter. Um, he's been phenomenal. He's been, you know, they, they, they he's always been a very good defender. Um, his rebounding has been helped significantly, I think, by the Drummond effect of, we've talked about this, just having big old drumming down there yeah like bruce has been very crafty bruce has made just so many smart plays he's playing was a, such a high confidence level yeah now we talk about ben simmons and him yeah i don't like it would be odd to see them on the floor together because it'd be two fairly non-shooters but bruce has almost become like an essential part of the rotation right well and bruce also has enough wherewithal to be like you gotta respect me a little bit at least a little bit as a shooter a little bit a little bit it's not you know we're not gonna set the world on fire but he takes open threes and makes them at a respectable clip at this point i mean that that'll probably come and go but uh he has enough sense to be like you know i think he knows that like i can't just be known as a non like range threat at all like that that would be bad for me He's interesting that when you look at his three point distribution, like there's a lot of games where he just takes one three and he misses it. And it's like, he's, he understands yeah, it's like, either on or I'll off. take it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I miss it. I'm not taking another one for the rest <laughs> of the game, but he's been averaging. I mean, something like 32 minutes a game yeah. over the, over since like the time when Harden's disappeared. Um, I, I, I almost don't, I almost can't believe that it's going to be this good. Let's do this quick break. Yeah. Coming back more emails. And we're back. Let's jump into the next question. Next up, Cheer Boy. This is Austin Stanlicht. Austin. <laughs> I always go Austin Sternlicht. Can't help it. Uh, it says, hello. Hello. Assuming the Nets don't win the title this year. Hmm. 
Do you have any smaller goals than that should have for this season? Personally, I'd like to see if Kessler Edwards can get another shot and if Cam can work his way back into the rotation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Austin. Interesting question. It is an interesting one. I don't have – no, I think this – even though I don't think the Nets are going to win the championship this year, there's too much – Hey, Ben Simmons is back, Kyrie's vaccination, blah, blah, blah. It's like the percent chance of them actually putting this all together is very small. Mm -hmm. You can't, I don't know. I don't really want to mess around with thinking like Kessler Edwards' development or Cam getting the back. Like, I think Goran Dragic has made Cam, um, you know, he's just going to learn from the bench, basically. Goran's been... I mean, I like him as a player. I like so. Kessler Edwards. I do think of the time yeah, like too. in which we were watching him was a dark period where we had to convince ourselves that <laughs> that this was going to be a solution to our problems. You know, there was sort of a collective delusion happening with him and, and Daron and that and Cam to a, to a lesser extent. David uh, Duke. <laughs> the David Duke Jr. moment. Like, that was... That was bad. And now we can look back at it with hindsight being 2020 and feel that and know that, that we should never be relying on a bunch of late first and you know second round picks to, um, to win us games in, in February and January. That's not, that's not what we should do. Um, it's like when during the beginning of the pandemic, when everyone was baking sourdough bread, yeah, exactly. You know, and now we look back like, what like, were we doing? Yeah, we I, were just making I did, loaves. I did of that. Bread? I, I made bread like three times, and I was like, <laughs> that, that looking back, I'm like, wow, that was so strange. How did I? And, and like, <laughs> like what what part of the TikTok algorithm did we all hit like collectively that that made us sourdough aficionados? I don't know, but yeah. So it is a great. That's a good parallel. Um, Camp Thomas is in an interesting spot right now, Mike. Mm. I wonder what you think of him because we were in the Discord. Shout out to the Discord and link in the Twitter bio. Uh, his his uh, his dedication to defense at this moment, like now we're relying on a whole different set of utility players, and some of them are high energy guys. And Cam's lack of energy is sometimes a little bit uh, more apparent than it used to be when it was the Harden led Nets. I feel like there's like a like um, I don't know. It's it's we've lifted up a stone now after post Harden, and there's like oh, there's yeah. some interesting stuff under here that maybe I don't like so much. Some creepy crawlies, Mike, that we might need to clear out. And it's not, like not when Pumbaa that... lifts up the the yes. rock, and there's all those delicious bugs. Yeah, I mean, and not to say that Cam Thomas is is like a you know not, a, a he's bug. a delicious bug. He is delicious, yeah. uh, but there is some some flaws there that might be why he's on a has a fringe role on the on the rotation. Well, I can say this overall. I'm very excited for the future of Kessler Edwards and Cam Thomas and Dayron Sharp. Of course, this, this is team. this is just in the immediate yeah. future. We want to qualify that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I I kind of like Sean Marks. You know, he he deserves his flowers uh, because I think Kessler Edwards is is if there's like if you keep tweaking him and keep improving him bit by bit, he's a guy that feels like a rotation wing. Cam Thomas obviously has like a Lou Williams like ceiling to his game and Dayron Sharp. I really like, I just wonder, you know, we just need to see a lot more of him, uh, but this season, like I, you know, they don't have, they can't really play around anymore. Not that Austin Sternlicht is, uh, is saying that they should play around. I just think those two guys are like, Hey, uh, we're going to go on a playoff run now. You guys sit and learn. Maybe you guys will get like a run. If uh, we need to sit Kevin Durant for a game and, you know, what else, but let them learn, let them sit back. I feel like Cam Thomas, the best thing about him is that he's a sponge. Mm. He is a sponge and he soaks up that knowledge. And um, I'm excited to see what he's going to be like next year after having gone through this rookie season with KD Harden and Durant. Next up. Kyrie. Cheer boy. Ooh, that's Ryan, AKA D Bronx. One four one four from the Discord. Shout out to the Discord. Um, says, "Hey guys, how is former number one Harden stand now current disavower Brian doing? Um, doing fine. <laughs> doing fine. It's easy when you have no real emotional connection to other humans. You know, you move on fast, Mike. You move on right away." <laughs> says, I love how you tried to and you did successfully co-opt Mina Kimes into your well, into your uh, Harden is a good person." Uh, 
fan club. I, whatever I mean, club you is. want my real take is I, I've now gone to the place <laughs> where Harden, take. the hard, your read on the Harden situation is basically a litmus test for anyone's EQ. If you're just like pure <laughs> angry at Harden, you just might have low EQ and I can't help you. you know? So what's your EQ? High, fucking. High. So your yeah, high. your take <laughs> that's emboldens been, yeah. your thought of your own EQ. Of course, yes. as always. Uh, he says, "My actual question: What's the deal with Blake? I know he's regressed from last year, but I refuse oh. to believe he's unplayable, especially in a game yesterday where we were low on bodies." And he signs off with love. Um, he's done. Love, love you, DeBronx. It's an interesting one, and you know, and this is, goes back to lifting open the the stone with all the bugs under it, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Is one of the bugs um, under the stone that that Blake Griffin was always unplayable, and we were trying to make it happen, and just wasn't a good fit, and it's becoming increasingly less a good fit as we're playing smaller and faster. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we're still going to have one more Blake game. There's going to be oh. one Blake moment, dude. There's going to be to be had two. Pro, like if he if we play like Giannis in in the playoffs, like he, he's actually like I I think he's got a small reputation for being good or somewhat good in moments at guarding people like Giannis. You know, we'll have a moment. A- Alex Schiffer is popping on. Wow, the pop Alex. Up. You're not. What's lying, up, Brian? Man. What's up, Alex? We're. Uh, we, it's like, how, hold on, yeah. Mike. You can stop talking right now, <laughs> Brian. It's like we never get to see each other. We know who each other are. Like us being uh, on the podcast together. Like heck with Mike. Mike has me on when he gets to the very bottom of his wish list. But yeah. we, us on the show, is like never a thing. He's. It's like he, never a thing. He's such a sick puppy that he he keeps us apart. You know, he keeps everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. Be, he can't let his friends be friends with each other. That's how he. he is. He's a disturbed individual. Yeah. I don't know where it comes from, yeah. but he he needs help. This That's isn't true. even a podcast anymore, Mike. This <laughs> is an intervention. <laughs> intervention. I have to know we, oh. Brian. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to say, uh, I hope Sham, Sam Amick, John Hollinger, Jay King. Trey Edwards, Zach Nina Harper, Kimes. Mo DeKeel. I hope all they're all doing okay because I asked them all to come on today. They all they all couldn't. So and it, it got to Alex. So Alex, thanks for popping on as you're doing today. Th- thanks for being your leftover. I'm not even your leftovers. I'm like the food you find on the ground. It's like, yeah, I guess I'll eat it. It's it's it, it, five second rule didn't seem to get well, What to are it. you doing? Just finding food on the ground and eating it, Alex kind of depraved is 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 that like a a a sports writer who travels from town to town thing and just never has a fridge stocked with food is that what that is is that what i'm reading right now yeah i am a dumpster diver actually (laughs) (laughs) um speaking of dumpsters how about the nets bro uh alex we can can Um, just patch them right into this last question we're we're, we're wondering if blake griffin will ever play any more meaningful minutes for for this year's nets it's not our question it's from d bronx from the discord I, I actually think he will, because if you look at the playoffs last year, I mean, he, he did some useful things, you know, when they were down scoring it, towards the end of that Milwaukee series, he was giving them a bit of a punch. Um, I just said, love it. And it, I do think there is some kind of niche of his ability to draw charges. Um, I mean, this is a team that at times can struggle to turn other teams over. So that that's one of the things they have in their pocket. So I, I don't think we've seen the last of him by any means. It's funny. I was thinking about last tomorrow's game in Orlando, which I leave for in like an hour. And uh, it kind of hit me that, I mean, there is, there is something to be said for him and what he, if you look at him in December when they had what they played Orlando with him as like their offensive focal point, like he wasn't bad. I mean, it, it wasn't his fault. That was the situation they were in and he, he was reasonable. So I, I think, well, I don't think we've seen the last of him. Yeah. And it, I, I just, we're going to get a Blake moment, but so, you know, the brought up the, uh, who the Bronx um, brought up the point of that, like the team was shorthanded and they probably could have used Blake. I don't know what you think. And I, I don't, I'm sure Steve Nash hasn't talked about this, but there's a certain like kind of code when you're dealing with a veteran like Blake, where you don't make him run in there and sort of like, unless if it's like a real emergency, right? Because for the most part, Steve Nash has definitely had a conversation with Blake Griffin said, we're not going to play you because we're playing these guys and this is our rotation. And it's kind of a, a difficult move to then in like a, a tight spot to be like, hey, Blake, I know you did, probably didn't really warm up correctly. Please go out there and play five minutes and, you know, get embarrassed. Like there's some sort of understanding that happens when a guy doesn't play. And Blake... When was the last time he played, like actually played significant minutes? I mean, I can look it up now, but it, yeah, it's been a while. Like has. he had a little bit of a run this season. I'm looking at basketball reference for anyone who wants to know what's going on. Um, 
before we we had we had another question that I do want you to weigh on. Um, he played one second against the Knicks, by the way, plus two on the Ooh. plus minus. So yeah. if you extrapolate Toron- that, that one second, back, that Toronto back to back, the last time he saw significant action, and coincidence, that's when Steve Nash was in health and safety protocols. <laughs> oh, so Steve Nash, Alex Schiffer of the Athletic confirms that Steve Nash hates uh, Blake Griffin. Yeah, um, yeah. Ben they Simmons do each other like you and I. Yeah. Someone asked, uh, "Are we going to see Ben Simmons before uh, this month is finished? Do you think we're going to see Ben Simmons within the next two weeks?" Within the next two weeks, uh, I would probably push and say probably towards the end of those two weeks if possible i mean i think it would be great if he can go out there next week in memphis and miami given the importance of those games and how they stack up and having Kyrie on the road and i mean there's literally three chance like that game in atlanta on april 2nd i think it is it, you could argue is the most important game of the season because it end it might end up being the one shot the big three has quote unquote to like play with each other before the, the play-in <laughs> It's so and, ridiculous. And, and, and given, and unless they can flip and get to the seventh seed and host the play in, and, and we'll see if, uh, if Eric Adams uh, caves to Kevin Durant, but I mean, I mean, literally it might, it might be their first game until assuming they get out of the plane uh, to the, till the first round of the playoffs. Like, so I feel like I, I was told um, last week, you know, like, a week and a half to two weeks probably for Ben. And then Steve says, you know, he's not even close to, to one-on-one stuff. Right? And then we have to build him up to all that. And I remember thinking like, well, to me, that timeline just goes out the door if that's the case. So I feel like it's the back end of those two weeks, if not a little beyond that. Yeah. That, that Steve Nash quote that he's not even, we, we Brad and I were joking about, he can't even do the Yijan Leon workout. Like he can't even work out against a chair right now. <laughs> Love that reference. Thank Love you. That it's reference. very Netsian. Um, that it, it can't even do it. That's pretty concerning, dude. Like that, like if you can't, if you can't like dribble a basketball against another human being, um, that doesn't portend great things for a guy who hasn't played basketball since May of last year or, you know, June, April of last say. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah. right. Cause the season would have been pushed a little bit. And right. Also, so of all people whose games could collect rust, his does seem distinctly likely to be rusty you know in a way well, that like a Kyrie might not have to shake it off his yeah. shooting stroke won't be yeah. off because hey, like what would maybe it'll Zinger. reverse maybe it's like a <laughs> Benjamin Button situation um I want to do Alex we, question? Okay. We're, we're yeah we're, we got dipping in the mailbag I hope you can entertain uh this our listeners here not okay. just I mean I'm I know putting you can't... together my little primer for my own mailbag you inspired Ooh, me so nice yeah you're All right, ready, Brian. You ready for the next up? Ready yeah, for next up. It. That's next up. Cheer boy. That's Nick Perkins. I wonder if Alex can hear the drop. Can, is he able to hear the drop? I can. I got to oh. hop off for a phone call real quick. Hold on. Okay. That's, that's what the pop-in's for. So great. That's the what, pop in, that's pop the, off, you know? Actually, I was going to do a different one because, well, this one's more of a, a this is better for Schiffer, but we could this do. This is a, like a whole episode. We could do a meme year, a meme year one. Cause I, I always feel bad asking him the meme ones. Um, where was well, it? That what Nick Perkins. So tell me what Nick Perkins is asking. Cause that's right. like a whole episode. Yeah. Which is what, what yeah, is your ranking of the possible first round opponents for the nets includes play in teams and full round matchups. So basically anyone here's your I, Nick. That is such a good question. That's a whole episode. That's a whole ass episode. That's a whole ass yeah. episode, Nick. Jeez. Jeez. What do you want out of us, Nick? You, you and uh, who was it? Piero and Font? No, who was it? Aaron, Aaron Vogt asking, asking huge, big, huge questions um, that can't possibly be answered. Uh, Tyler Young, friend of the show. Wait, who is, who, I had one great one that I wanted to, not great one, but um, anyways, I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody saying, if you had, if you had the ability to sit one-on-one with Kyrie Irving, oh, which that's Tyler Young, Tyler Young, oh, Why yeah. don't you give him a proper, uh, you okay, know. okay, here we go. Next up, that's cheer boy, Tyler Young at the Nets Junkie on Twitter. He drops a drops a social handle, which, by the way, if you guys want to get social, just get boosted. You know that's the way to do it. Um, 
This that, is that was my mother. And given how I'm never on this show, she gets precedence. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. I totally understand. I was so excited. It was like, is it Rich Paul? Yeah, is it it's working. Sean Marks? But no, it's your mom. No, it's your mom. Um, Equally important. This... More important than both of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. This is a bit of a meme question alex so bear with us but um be part of the meme you know heck uh it says hope hope all's well fellas question for the bod if each of you had five minutes to chat with Kyrie one-on-one what would you say wow what would you say mike well i so I, the thing i most want to get out of him is to like fully understand his anti-vaccination stance even though if he wouldn't define it as anti-vaccination just because we've never if it's a one-on-one conversation I want to learn that. Like I need to like, so I, I grapple with a lot with like the people who don't like vaccinations. I really struggle to understand their point of view. And I would like to know where Kyrie is coming from because we've had some reports like Matt Sullivan of Rolling Stone that uh, various members of Kyrie's family believe, uh, you know, potentially that this, that Satan is in the vaccine, which is, um, that would be a big deal. That'd be breaking news. That'd be Woodward and Bernstein part two. If Satan. That really sucks if that's true. Yeah. That would bad. that would suck for how many hundreds of millions of people? It's, it's a lot oh. of Satan. It's a lot of Satan. It's a there. lot of Satan out there, folks. Um, <laughs> kind of drop the value of Satan. If Satan was that true. prevalent. You know what I'm Dilutes saying? Dilutes it. Um, and so I would just want to know that. I, I know that's probably not the best. So like. Is this five minute chat me trying to get a relationship yeah. with Kyrie? You're, well, by doing that, I wouldn't. He's gonna stonewall the shit out of you with that with that yeah, line of questioning. You, would you gotta you gotta face? go in through astrology? You, you, know? you gotta go in through. The, well, yeah, yeah, that's you, how I go. Do you tell me how you would talk exactly. to him. Exactly. You start with being like Libra Sun, um, Leo Moon, you know, and let's go from there. Can we connect? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, and then hopefully that five minutes begets another five minutes where you can begin to pull apart the onion but it's not going to be you're not getting into the core on, within five minutes mike no way it, it, you are like the person who when the genie says you have three wishes you'd be like i want my first wish i want unlimited wishes right i am right. i want the new wardrobe i don't know i think I it's like a legit answer i'm just saying like if i've got wardrobe. five minutes i'm trying to tee up a relationship where i get you know another five minutes is that is that 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 breaks the question i guess that's not that's, that's fair not, uh, alex you probably thought about for a very long time, if you had a one-on-one -on -one with Kyrie, what that would be. So as they, as the, uh, a reporter who covers the team, what would you want to discuss with Kyrie? Yeah, I, uh, I kind of would probably not bother with all the vaccine stuff. Cause I feel like he said it all that he plans to say on it. And, and he's not going to budge on, you know, where the sources of his information and, and the stuff he claims to know that the rest of us don't. I actually would kind of look forward and be like, so you've played 22 games. You've played brilliant in those 22 games, but you have a player option and you just hired, I believe it's a stepmom for his agent. Like what's your plan for free agency given all this? I mean, you know, teams probably aren't going to offer you the max because of all this. I mean, do you plan to just opt into your player option and kind of worry about the rest next week? Like what's your, you know, the, the story by Joe Varden, um said that Kyrie had told one of his re re uh, relatives I'm trying to remember the relation but I think it's his aunt on the uh the reservation with the Sioux tribe that you know best was just a job to him so I think I would probably spend those five minutes on the future and like what's your plan and how much longer do you see yourself doing this and you know did James departing maybe change your view on either how long you plan to do this and your thoughts on, on the Nets. I mean, the, the Knicks clearly can use a point guard. Are they going to make a run at him and he can still stay in the area? Um, you know, I, I would probably focus on the unique free agency situation he's put himself in and, and the long-term stuff, because I mean, the vaccine stuff, I, I don't, I don't know how, uh, how that conversation would go kind of to, to piggyback off Brian. And I mean, like I, I've been in all these press conferences where he's been asked this from a million different angles and gotten defensive and kind of ended things shorter. Um, because of it, it's like if it, if I only get him for five minutes, I'm trying to milk the most out of those five minutes. So going in circles with him doesn't seem very productive from a reporter's perspective. That's such yeah, a, and I guess such a when I've already kind of gone in circles with him anyway on some of this. Yeah. I, I guess I took this question as like, I'm getting five honest minutes. You know, I'm getting... No, it's to oh, make it's, a Harry it's, Potter it's reference. Yeah. It's Veritaserum. <laughs> oh, you, you took it from me, Brian. Damn, I very good. This is exciting. <laughs> Two nerds. Sweet. Yeah. Um, 
that's what I'm assuming. But I agree with you. And Alex, you bring up an interesting point, and I hinted this on Twitter. Um, the Nets have fully embraced the Kyrie thing. The the transformation from October where they're like, stay away, to when Kyrie enters the building in that Knicks game, Joe Sy gets up from his seat and gives Kyrie this big hug. You know, the Nets Twitter account is tweeting out pictures of Kyrie courtside. The Nets have fully re-embraced Kyrie, right? And I'm not saying that's the right move or wrong move. It would, I guess it would be weird if they were icy to him. Um, you know, this question of the extension looms over. I, I do think it it just is going to lead to they're going to give him like a three-year deal max money that is like in between, like, you know, the four-year what he could get on the market, but obviously gives the Nets some flexibility if Kyrie decides to stop playing basketball at some point, which is not out of the question. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. You got time, Alex? Yeah, I can do one more, and then I got to hop off. Yeah. Okay. Right. Next up, that's Cheer Boy. That's Javier Pagon. I love all, the names have been great. There was an Infante earlier. It's just been on fleek. Um, so this one piggybacks off our last one, which is, was I the only one surprised by how good Kyrie was defensively in the next Sixers game? Is this the Kyrie we get engaged defensively and offensively? How do you see the season playing out? How about the playoffs? So obviously everybody cares about, you know, our ceiling is really married to Kyrie's coming and goings. But is there an argument to, to be made, piggybacking off of this, that because he's played so little this season that he's just hyper engaged? He can, he can multiply his engagement because he's got fresher legs? Is this Are these dumb takes? I, I, think, it's, I think it's true. I mean, Kyrie has always been an injury issue, and this – him remaining uh, a part-time player has kept him. He's played 18 games this year, you know, and that is, I mean, would I, it's going to be the the fewest of his career besides the first season in Brooklyn when he only played 20. Like he's gonna, I mean, he barely will just surpass that. Um, he's looked great. Uh, I the, the I took his defensive effort as like, hey, I I don't like you, James Harden. And I'm going to play defense. Um, I still think they're, he's going to be allowed to play at home by the time playoffs come around. So, um, you know, maybe that'll wear on his body. So there you go. Alex, Alex do you? Yeah, I feel like the, the Harden situation was a one of one in that it was very clear with both teams. I mean, the Sixers weren't exactly acknowledging Ben Simmons was he was on the court with Patty Mills. Um, he had that weird, whatever you want to call it, dap with, with Doc Rivers. And then James Harden, if you saw a pregame or it, right before tip-off, I mean, he runs over to the Nets, the Nets bench, says what's up to like James Johnson, Bruce Brown, like the, those guys. And kind of as he gets his way closer, you know, making his way up to the coaching staff, getting towards, you know, Jacques Vaughn, Steve Nash, those guys. Then he starts to go, all right, it's game time. I got to run into the stanchion. Mm. So I – uh. I felt like that was a one-on-one where Kyrie's like, no, I, I got him. He's mine. Um, if there is a net Sixers playoff series, I think we would probably see more of that. But I don't think it's fair to Kyrie to ex- given, given the history of, uh, of expecting that to be the norm going forward. But I mean, there are, there have been times where he's definitely guarding. You see him kind of calling, uh, communicating on defense and trying to get guys in position. But, uh, but I mean, that was like, like a uh, Jimmy Butler, um, all defensive team, yeah. hold my beer, Matisse Tybal type performance. It was uh, quite from good. him defensively. So I, I feel like that that should not be the expectation for uh, for all the remaining games. Grant, I mean, there was as we speak today, three remaining road games. Excuse me, four because I'm about to go to Orlando, and then the play in right now is in Toronto where Kyrie would not be eligible for. So we are talking about a while. So you might keep saying uh, in time for the playoffs, we have to talk about the play in before we talk about the playoffs. So there you go. So nice. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thought you'd like that. That was very um, ESPN. Well, it was a compliment. It's, okay. a, it's a genuine compliment. Alex. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I don't I don't see that being the case going forward. All right. Well, what a great thank you for popping in. I know you gotta go. Brian, do do we wanna do one more? Or Alex, do you wanna say goodbye? Say another Harry Potter? Uh you say anything else? <laughs> what about what Harry are your Potter? socials? What are you what are you working on next? Yeah, Let's tell people what are you doing? Stuff. 
That, um, that Al, by the way, Alex won an award for a story that he w- wrote about Steve Kerr. Not about, yeah, not about the Nets at all. Yeah. How Steve Kerr it, essentially was, it was almost a chance where he was going to be flown to North Korea to play Kim Jong Un in basketball or horse or something, right? What? Yes. Yeah. Wow. I got to go see this. Uh, so you yeah, won an award, right? Yes. It, thank you. Was it Associated Press? Yes. APSC. APSC. So congratulations. You can find the story probably on your Twitter, yes. which is what? Uh, at Alex2 underscore Schiffer. Yeah. It's my favorite Twitter account online. So. Oh, that's nice. See, you're saying all these nice things about me as I'm about to leave. I yeah. had fully planned on taking a parting shot at you and having Brian help me out with it, almost like throwing him a lob and we you, both dunk you on you. You can still do it. He's He likes it. He's he's sick. Yeah, he's a That's right. Well, like, yeah, I really sicko. like, Brian, how your background says you're, upheld, you're obsessed, seek help, King. Yeah. Like, I feel yeah. like it's like you're like literally the writings on the wall or on the Zoom for Mike. Yeah. Like, we're trying to send you a message. So I, I hope you got that message. I hope you got that message. Message Mike. received. True. Message received. Now, yeah. you missed our vaccine conversation, so that's the real oh, seek well, help. That's, I'm great. that's yeah. great that I popped off just in time yeah. for that. <laughs> All right, Alex. Uh, have fun in Orlando. I appreciate it. There's not much to do there, but I'm going anyway. Uh, Enjoy. Brian. Good to pleasure. see you, brother. I mean, yes. Like, yeah. like uh, we'll do it again. Yeah, Somehow. I had a metaphor I was going to use, but I feel like it might offend people, so I'm not I'm not going to bother. But but I hope <laughs> I hope to Put see in the DMs. you. DMs. <laughs> yeah, I hope to see you at some point in the future. I hope Mike keeps uh, doesn't try to keep us away from each other like like he has. Um, I'd like that. I'd like it's not that. healthy for you. It's not healthy for me. And frankly, it's not healthy for Mike. That's so, right. That's right. So, on that note, uh, take care, boys. See you really. Bye, later. Alex. Excellent. Good seeing you, dude. Wait. Should we do one more? Or just call it a night i think it's a the other ones are all mandate mandatey in nature okay so you well, know lots of man, anyways shout out to everybody who's emailing about the mandates we like them it's just you know for the show's purposes it gets a little exhausting to go around it and around it I mean, i'm sure everyone feels that but you know there's a lot of people who's talking in there we don't mind it so keep them coming but uh only probably only one mandate question per show you know because we'll because we'll, it takes 15 minutes <laughs> it to takes answer. forever because you have to qualify everything five times um but yeah so but that's it let's 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 call it there um are you concerned at all about seth curry the fact that he just missed that game i'm not i guess i i think it was explained properly for anyone wondering it was basically explained that because this the tip time was so early that um for the nets game which was one o'clock um that uh that he couldn't properly get his ankle ready for the game so i guess i'm not that concerned okay that's it wow you can find us on twitter at bk glue guys nets daily.com the athletic get yourself by the paywall the athletic.com slash glue guys is a city area of the new york times uh, brian <laughs> mike you did a great job way to get us out yeah see you guys right. bye, bye.